Hello and welcome to the AV Forum's Movies and TV podcast for January 2024. Tonight I'm joined by Tom Davis. Hello. Mark Costello. Hello. And Simon Crust. Bang on time. Nice. <laughs> for uh, once. Yeah. <laughs> January podcast, a bit of a shake up. We're, we're doing it a, in a different style. Um, we're going to provide you with the usual, uh, much of what you had before, a run through the competitions. We're adding in our top 10 choices of the month, recommendations that you can watch right now or very soon. Um, absorbing a bit more US, a few more US releases. And then we're going to go with a theme. And our We're going to be talking a lot about conspiracy theories and yes. chilling brain supplements as well. <laughs> Definitely. And... Um, and I think, uh, what was our theme, Tom? What did you recommend our theme be this week? Was... I recommended this today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Babe, uh, Babe Pig in the City. Yes, best was... best movies about a pig in a city. Yes, yes. Or what top about, ten reasons pig? to watch Babe Pig in the City. Top ten reasons to watch yeah. Babe Pig in the City. Or we're going to talk about whether Hollywood should have maybe a rethink of their blockbuster strategy post 2023 either or it could be either or let's vote, 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 now. Pigs. <laughs> yeah. vote, vote now i vote let's, pigs. let's leave it up to the audience we are live <laughs> <laughs> oh, um in on the competition side we had a, a bunch of new patrons join uh david john gottwald uh ben ackerman saab unleashed nick arjun verdi and sean mcgreevy thank you very much for joining your prizes are in the post uh, and bought us a coffee. We had someone bought us a coffee, Deads and Neil007. Thank you very much for buying us a coffee. I could actually do with a coffee right now. Uh, we also have some choice titles to win on competition, on the competition side. Um, high tension in 4K Ultra HD from Second Sight in their limited edition lavish box set with art cards and mean streets also from second sight in their limited edition 4k set with more art cards than Tell the high tension the one it's very nice hard, it's hard nice box. very nice hard, hard box. box yeah I, I mean they look gorgeous i actually have both of them around here somewhere but they probably wouldn't show up on the screen even though i held them so invisible box um <laughs> Also, Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 on 4K Ultra HD Steelbook. Uh, there's a bunch of other competitions. Tune into the competitions page to see more added shortly too. Our top 10 recommendations of the month uh, in quick succession. Number 10 is The Beekeeper. David Ayers, Jason Statham, Beat em Up is, was for me alternating fun jason statham action with so bad it's good b-tastic puns and hilariously terrible scripting and and just fighting people with flaming honey i mean it's why not it's not like it's a nonsense film it was a lot of fun it had no right to be that much fun he 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 should do a whole bunch of these uh yeah it's good and, and don't see it cinema because it's probably on its tail end it's a sky <laughs> original in the making it's got Navy sky forums. don't all, see it at the cinema it's got sky all over the banner it's coming to sky give it some time enjoy it on sky i don't have sky at a track. well go and see it at cinema mark i mean i don't know <laughs> oh so i don't know why you recommended you. that now are you yeah go oh, and right, see it. I see. I, you should have really seen it before we did the top 10 list if you That's wanted true. to be fully apprised but that you did true. see mean girls which is our number nine spot i did see mean girls and i really wanted to not like this mean girls because i love the 2004 version but i really did kind of like this nicely updated for you know modern social media type culture the cast are all pretty game even the songs yes there are songs in this one because the trailer tried so hard to convince people that this wasn't a musical <laughs> but it is uh yeah it, you know i had a really good time with it keeps so much of the snide and venomous dialogue uh it you know it's just do we need a musical version of it your mileage may vary i i mean i I, I really enjoyed the original Mean Girls. Um, you will likely enjoy this thing, Cass. I know, but I'm the kids aren't quite there yet. 
I tried to, but within seconds of them discussing various positions of intercourse by the teacher teaching the kids various the different positions of intercourse, I was like, nope, we're not ready for this. <laughs> no. There's not no. a lot of intercourse chat in the new one, Cass. Okay. Well, I'll I'll keep that in mind. Um number eight, for all mankind season four. I, I love for all mankind. It's the weakest season, but it's got a tremendous start and a suitably tense finish. Joel Kinnaman, God, never thought I'd say, is the star of the show. Uh, And it's still one of Apple's best flagship um, productions. I recommend it. Very, very strange. I put it on to watch the other day, and I'm watching the recap, and I'm thinking, I don't remember any of this. I don't remember any of this at all. I haven't seen season three yet. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> Go back and watch season three. Go back now. and watch Having season three spoiled watch season all. Yeah. Or just watch a five minute season three recap on YouTube. No, season th- yeah. season three is the better yeah. season. You don't want to miss that for season mm. four. Um, but uh, but it's good. It's, it's quality TV. And True Detective has returned for a fourth season, hasn't it, Tom? I hey. haven't. I haven't dipped I, into it yet, but I've not had a chance to catch up with episode two. But episode one was everything I wanted and more. Um, nice. It was a return to the cool, like vaguely supernaturally hints from the first season, and there are some visual clues in from the first season as well. So it's uh, if you if you fell off it after season two, get back on because they've gone right back to that well that was so yes. much fun um, all those years ago, and it really was all those years <laughs> ago. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. It's great. Mm. Uh, Even I watched it and it was good. You you watched it? Oh, yeah, you have <laughs> you watched, watched it. because it was good. I know. It's You're like never going to watch any of the others. It's going to be like Warrior all over again. To be fair, I'll be lucky if I watch episode two. But still, <laughs> that's not the point. I quite enjoyed it. It was good. I agree with Tom. <laughs> Number six is 1993's Alive, uh, as re envisaged by Netflix. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear, yes. I dear, yeah. Yeah, Society of the Snow, uh, an absolutely belting film. Uh, Jay Biona brought a real emotional core to this, which uh, he doesn't scrimp on the more visceral sides of it. The plane crash is absolutely terrifying. There is a mid-film avalanche that has you catching your breath. It, it, it's that immediate and terrifying. He doesn't delve too much into the more salacious side, the cannibalism, but it, it's not shied away from. Uh, ultimately, it's just a really, really fantastically put together emotional telling of uh, the infamous plane crash. And even if you've seen Alive, which actually I haven't, uh, but from what I've been reading, uh, this version trumps that considerably. Mm. So if you haven't seen it on Netflix, get it watched. It's well worth your time. Here's me, just cancelled it for a month. Shocks. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're in the review team. It's terrible. That's terrible. That means I can't recommend number four, but I'll come to that in a second. Um, Reacher season two is our number five spot pick. Uh, Mark loved it. It's utter nonsense. I loved it. It's utter nonsense. It's so stupid. And it's such ridiculous things happen. It's right back (laughs) in the 80s. It's like proper meathead i'm gonna charge at an entire gang of armed bikers and just hit them with my elbow (laughs) it's just so yeah but you believe richson could bloody do all i mean he couldn't walk but he could sure do a lot (laughs) that 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 in the final episode you know is everyone watch it just for watch, just for waiting to the final episode to try and see Richardson run to that helicopter. Oh, no. It's the most <laughs> comedy thing you've ever seen. It's like the anti cruise. It, it really is. is. It's it is. brilliantly it's terrible. Such awkward running. It was like, are you in a hurry? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. He 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 did his oh. best in that under the very tight circumstances. But yeah. Um, a lot of fun. I want to see more. It's utter mm. nonsense, but, yes. But I want to see more. It's very, it's very Reacher. It, at the same time, it's not quite being Reacher because it's so stupid, but it is also very Reacher. Um, number four was a, a left field choice uh, from me, the brother's son. I was going to recommend it to Simon, but he cancelled net, his Netflix. I might get uh, it watched in the next three days. I, I do find quite fancy that actually. Um, I, after oh, reading you know, your review, I saw the I hadn't, I hadn't even heard of it. 
I saw the trailer and I was like, I'm not going to watch this. And over time and some good feedback, I was like, mm, maybe I should try it. You, you will know in the first 15 minutes whether it's for you. It's got fantastic martial arts and real laugh out loud moments. And who's, how who's in it? Have... it? It's um, Michelle, yeah? Michelle, Michelle, yeah. Michelle, yeah. It's Michelle, <laughs> Michelle yeah. yeah. Thank you, also correct. Um, That's even worse than my trains are rolling gag, Tom. <laughs> It's uh, yeah, but it was uh, it was it's better timed, Mark. Oh, 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 oh. Have a word. You know what? If I could actually walk off a podcast, I would. Yeah, I honestly. Um, I I recommend it. It's very 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 easy to binge. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's a it's a good show. I I didn't expect to like that much. A U.S. contingent gets a number three spot with Monsieur Spade. This is uh, one I'm looking forward to, man. Yeah, review mm -hmm. isn't up. It's um, it's it's out in the U.S. First two episodes. I'm halfway through the the second episode. Uh, it is Clive Owen as Sam Spade. Sam Spade, Humphrey Bogart, uh, Maltese Falcon, Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett. And um, and he's older and kind of retired, and he's given a job to uh, to get a child back to her parents in France, and he goes there and ends up basically staying there. Um, and it's very nicely put together. I don't know whether I had any high expectations for this whatsoever, um, but despite Clive Owen's accent which i would say takes a bit of getting used to at the start of episode one um i think he's a great choice he's he's perfect for that kind of role he really nails the sort of cynical wisecracking older um, detective and it's got a a really nice blend of noir you know classic maltese falcon noir in a in a different landscape the Euro landscape really suits it. Uh, and it's also quite dark. So uh, the first episode's like a feature length episode. Um, I would I would say that this is something to look forward to. I have no idea how we're going to watch it in the U UK. It's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to, all episodes are going to be watched and reviewed well before there's even a release date announced in the UK. I have no idea why that is. But when you do come across it, recommend it. Uh, number two, Fargo season five. For those who didn't um, stick with Fargo uh, because of season four, I mean, I, I, I've i loved all things Fargo. It's never really achieved the greatness of uh, Billy Bob Thornton's season one, uh, but five is is a strong contender. Uh, Juno Seriously? I mean, that... Yeah. that 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 it, sounds it, that sounds it, wrong really it really is really yeah. is and i loved season one juno temple and john ham uh, and jennifer jason lee they are fabulous in it i would have never said it juno temple is absolutely scene stealing in it uh very very good return to form and i enjoyed four but this is a proper return to form i i would be very surprised if a lot of people didn't put it pretty much on par with that first season so it's quite exciting that uh noel hawley's hopping off this and onto aliens like what a crossover yeah man when are we getting that crossover that's right <laughs> alien colon fargo bring it make it make it so <laughs> oh yeah real good now uh, and the number one spot which again is going to get reflected when we uh when we talk about what hollywood should do maybe a bit differently uh is four things oh, tom, man. tom loved it man like how how can it be not even the end of january and i feel like i've seen the the movie of the year i i bowled over by how um abrasive it is <laughs> It's, and it is very, very funny, um, but it is there to challenge the things that you think, which is great. But in doing so, beautiful, it's hilarious. Ah, oh, I just can't recommend it enough. Go and see it immediately if you haven't nice. already. Yes, I need to. Those are our recommendations. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty good month, mm. but it is interesting. The 
the uh, dynamic. I mean, I appreciate cinema is a bit slow to get started, but uh, it is interesting. I, I suppose I wanted our theme to be taking in everything of 2023 and looking at a variety of um, themes for 2024. The fact that, for example, uh, all almost all of the biggest movies of last year, the ones that you expected to be, you know, real big hitters from Fast X to Dead Reckoning to Indie, um, they they did not fare well all the way through to Aquaman two. I mean, the, these are not movies that have that have done particularly well, and they spend a lot of money on it. And I, my counter argument for how they should be cheaper is is wrapped up in a film which also didn't make its budget back, which is the creator. But it is that maybe the gamble is less if you don't spend half a billion making a movie or however much i mean you know 300 400 thousand you're putting into it plus then you slap marketing on i mean it feels like hollywood need to to rethink it they turned in the creator what was it for 80 80 million it doesn't look like a an 80 million no, movie man. you know so so i wonder whether there's not notwithstanding the fact that particularly as original derivative sci-fi goes you know i appreciate it didn't didn't go down as well which is par for the course for even cruises like oblivion you know the this this happens to most original sci-fi out there um but I, I do think that the technique employed should make someone in hollywood sit up and and pay attention and, and just to be clear the technique they employed was we're not going to shoot the whole thing on green screen we're not going to use uh, Disney stagecraft. We're going to take a small amount of our cast and crew to various real locations, and we're going to shoot key scenes in all those locations, a variety of suitable real locations. And then we're going to layer effects onto those scenes that we filmed. And the end result looks pretty blockbuster standard considering the budget they put into it so uh, yes yeah yes, but, yes but. But, but, <laughs> but. well no but before we get yes, into but. that I, I think the creator is a very interesting one there because you're absolutely right it's been held up as a template for the potential new breed of cheaper blockbuster but then again just go to our review threads and look at what people are saying about i know the i know quality I know. I know. no 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 but, but but i do think that this plays directly into it it was considerably cheaper at 70, 80 million quid. But part of that was they used a prosumer camera. They did, yes. Which automatically, well, added noise or was it didn't quite give us pristine an image from what I've been led to believe. Similarly, because of that, the, some of the CG that they've put in is a little bit, you know, in the background, a little bit, you know, and, and I think a lot of comments that we're seeing about, oh, well, it, don't quite like the visuals. It's, it's visual aesthetic isn't very nice. Well, I think actually that's as a result of the mm. cheap nature of some of it. it so is, I think we have to be careful. The, I mean, it, you're right, but you yeah. know what? I I liked it. I, I mean, liked I, I, the visual aesthetic, I, and yeah, I yeah. and I think that that, that 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 I can't see up against all of the blockbuster flops that you've got, mm. which have employed ridiculous amounts of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's. I I agree with you that there still could be, there's still room for like a June. But, but yeah, but that wasn't the movie that cre the creator was. That it wasn't the movie mm. that was like we are going to look the best we can. It was yeah. like we have got an idea and we are going to do it, and it is going to look acceptable, believable enough for the film to work. And I think. That there is something in Hollywood's like collective brain that is like a mental block against good enough. And mm -hmm. and what had me thinking about this the other day was um just just remembering some really cheap old um sci-fi, but well, they probably weren't that cheap in the day, but like something dumb like Flight of the Navigator, you know? And you oh. think like Great movie, yeah, banger. Great movie, but even at the time, the effects are a bit like, 
eh. Mm. But you don't care because yep. they are good yeah. enough for what the movie is trying to do. And that is yep. exactly what I thought of the creator. The creator has a number of things that didn't sit quite right with me, but how it looked was not one of them. And it's no um, crime to look a bit cheap. But I, I And I think like that that's something that is not in the Hollywood consciousness at the moment. And that's why, one of the reasons why we're getting like escalated budgets, because they are not happy mm. with this idea of good enough and they want it to be pristine. And when you go for pristine and you miss, it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, but when you go for good enough and you hit it, nobody it's cares. Exactly. No, I, it's good I, enough. I, I, absolutely. I mean, let, let's be honest. We could sit here every day and, and point at some slightly shonky effects, you know, every five minutes in Raiders. <laughs> but yeah. we don't because, you know, yeah. Ra Raiders has all the other stuff. And it's the other stuff that I think has been missing somewhat. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd say what was really so this week I rewatched uh, Vanilla Sky. Huge fan of that film, love its pieces. But one of the extras that I watched was the press tour for it. So this was what two thousand and one. So we are going back twenty years. But what struck me about that press tour is the excitement that that film generated. You know, Tom Cruise was doing what Tom Cruise does, and he goes all over the the world, and where everywhere he went, he was greeted by throngs of excited people we don't get that anymore why don't we get that anymore it, it it feels like potentially part of the reasons why these blockbusters are failing is we have fallen out of love with the blockbuster we don't feel like that now. i was watching this thing and it was someone sent me a link to it and i was watching it, i thought I want to feel like that now why don't i feel like that when you know the latest blockbuster is announced i don't so I think that's a really interesting thing to think about, you know, is how have we changed in our feelings towards these blockbusters? Well, we 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 probably as a group are uh, slightly more cynical and jaded. We got often. old. Yeah, God. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah but, but the, the last few years have not been kind <laughs> to cinema. I speak, would speak say. for yourself, Cass. I've had I've had a <laughs> you know I've had a kind to years. us, not kind to cinema, <laughs> yeah, like. No. Yeah. You know, I it, think it's... I think we're just in like that interstitial period where we've just mm. we've just we're just coming out the end of a period where Hollywood thought it had the formula for making an exciting movie that everybody loved, i.e. a superhero movie. And we are we're coming to the end of that now. And we're just in this interstitial period where we're sort of on the we tail end come of up that. With and, ideas. Yeah, yeah. And it feels it be feels like thing. Yeah, it feels like a bit of a bummer, but no doubt, no doubt there will be a new, a, whatever the new superhero movie is, you know, whatever the new Steven Spielberg movie is. We will we'll get another wave. We just don't know what that wave will be or when it will yeah. hit. And until then, it's a bit like, eh, I can't really get excited about the tail end of a dumb trend. <laughs> so, so here we so do we so obviously if if superheroes are well then they're not going to be on the way out they're not we've got a fallow year this year we've only got the one MCU film I ain't counting those god awful Sony monstrosities that we're going to get so obviously the DCEU is being reborn so we've got a fallow so blockbusters if they're not now going to be superhero films are we now going to see a change in what even the kind of genre that a blockbuster is these days. Do we think that's on the cards? Or are we going to just fall back into, it's going to be a different kind of superhero film. It's going to be a different kind of sci-fi explodathon. Do we always think that the blockbuster is going to be the sci-fi explodathon? Well, I mean, easy easy pickings for blockbuster these years. Again, this year is going to be sci-fi. You know, um, Garland's Civil War, even though it's not probably got a blockbuster budget. I wouldn't rate that as sci-fi. I also probably wouldn't rate it as blockbuster material. Well, okay, but it's yeah. going to be it's going to be like the the one of those tentpole movies that we go and see even though it should be in the indie realm like Ex Machina. I feel like he's earned himself enough enough goodwill to be this year's kind of Barbie Oppenheimer contender. I'm not saying it's going to be that. But like there's a lot of buzz 
around civil war and 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 it almost shouldn't be from i mean having said that is civil war not like december like with, oh yeah like yeah we're suddenly talking about 2025 20, 20, release yeah, yeah. didn't we agree last year that anything <laughs> in q4 was basically 2025 yeah. <laughs> okay so june june yeah part. june i mean june I mean, is it's... probably like it that's that's going to be the thing that people go go and see yeah. um but also i don't think people realize that that is going to be like I don't know. That's it's not a it's not a safe bet, isn't it? It's not a safe bet because the plot of June is not like a cozy, cozy, everything wraps up, super feel good. Like is it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna get a mixed reception when it comes out. It's compared to the first one, which was like powerful and exciting and gorgeous. And the second one's gonna be that, but it's also gonna be a bit um tricky in comparison to the neatness of for example going back to like a, a superhero movie just in terms of like the morals and ethics that come with the plot of dune i mean so, i hear so... i hear all the words you're saying but i'm scribbling the number 10 <laughs> <laughs> just... it's a te- it's a 10 so, 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 so that's interesting then so, so so take something like poor things now i haven't seen mm. poor things but i've heard that it is every bit the visual spectacular beautiful that... film you, you know that that a blockbuster could be so do we ever think that we'll see a time where the more intellectually challenging but visual splend you know splendiferous films will start to you know take the place of you know well that the, was that was last no. year wasn't it no yeah, that, that was exactly it oppenheimer <laughs> do you know what i mean oppenheimer yeah for sure but what yeah. was really quite pleasing about last year was the fact that we might get a resurgence of people going to see comedy movies again, because it just feels like yes. a comedy movie has not been a moneymaker. Oppenheimer wasn't a comedy. Long... <laughs> Oppenheimer, hilarious movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> Laughed all the way through. Barbie is what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, which we've not had since, well, I guess in the last 20 years, like the beginning of the 2000s, we had this period where like a blockbuster could be just a stupid comedy. And it would typically be like a, a Ben Stiller or an Adam Sandler or, a um, you know, that sort of Judd Ap- Apatow thing. Like, mm. and that could be the money spinner for a studio. And I hope that maybe Barbie is like, let's just make a, really funny movie that lots of people want to go and see if that becomes a blockbuster again i will be very happy indeed mm. see I, I think last year is really interesting because you, you could very easily look at last year and take the wrong messages out of last year couldn't you barbie right toys let's go make i mean toy yeah movies. that's you know, already happening though right uh, like mattel have already got a slate ab- of movies ab- ab- yeah. absolutely you know let's be honest everyone went to oppenheimer because of christopher nolan so Christopher Nolan is almost like a genre in himself, right? It's a Chris Nolan film. Of course it is. Everyone's going to go anyway. So I think you could look at those two and, and easily go, right, so those aren't your typical genre blockbusters. I want to know, when are we going to get a return to horror as a proper... I'm not talking about the Blumhouse crap that, you know, cost 5p and makes 80 million everyone, you know jumps up and down i'm talking about when when, you know a horror film goes and makes half a billion pound when are we gonna see that that's what i want nosferatu that's not gonna make that's gonna make that's gonna make 10 million (laughs) alien romulus no no you know what you know what i i don't think that i think alien is gonna go the way (laughs) of last year's uh Mm. you know previous ip you know sure things i think it's gonna be another indie it's gonna be another mission i I think no no one under the age of <laughs> us gives a crap. And let's be honest, we're all jaded and burnt, and we'll just go, we'll watch it on streaming. Totally true. And I feel the same way about Gladiator 2. Like, who's going to see that? Us. People like us. And we are not everyone, and not by a long shot. So I'm, I just think... I don't that think like, I'm going to see Gladiator 2. There you go, man. It's <laughs> yeah, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm not so, sure. So, so interestingly I'm enough, going sure back to the horror thing then, Five Nights at Freddy's. You could argue that that is a... Yeah, yeah, but we, we're like that. But the Ute, the Ute of today, Kaz, that's one of 
their property. What the ones who were too young to watch the Nicolas Cage version? Yes, but you know, but that made. But again, it wasn't. It wasn't the the smash. You know that 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 it potentially could have been. So do we just think that maybe the days of the blockbuster are gone? Well, certainly the blockbuster. You know, the billion. I mean, yes, we had Oppenheimer. Yes, we had Barbie. But you could almost argue that they stood out because if they were not released together, I will sit here now and say they wouldn't have made that much money if it wasn't for the whole Barbenheimer phenomenon. Yeah, I think that in itself came a cultural. That was a cultural touchstone of twenty three. That best possible outcome is that Hollywood realizes that their their numbers are stupid and that those <laughs> and that those numbers are like w- once in a blue moon and not what they should be expecting on the mm. return for every single movie um because that's that's how you get like 200 million being spent on something that nobody wants to see because the more money you spend the more um you have to get back and it's just never going to happen but they don't see it that way no they see, they see john wick costing like whatever it was 25 30 million to make and making 400 million so therefore if you spend like 100 million on john wick you're gonna make like yeah right that's gonna mul- uh, that's um, gonna multiply yeah. and it just does that's not how the maths works it, it, it is it isn't but it you you do get a bigger return not proportionally but yeah y- they don't want to take the risk of having to make 10 good john wicks yeah so they prefer to make one sequel at a multiple of the price and get a multiple of the return even but, though the multiple's not the same so- where they go wrong is when they get to the like mm-hmm. 10th fast and furious what? film or the 30th marvel film and they're like the multiples are no longer yeah true, no, true, not even but, meeting true but I, then again i think you know are we now starting or potentially going to see that's the the long talked about segregation of you know smaller budget films streaming it's only worth releasing a mega enormo bluster, uh, blockbuster. It's it's not, it, I can't, I mean, it's a nice idea, but I can't see that cinemas wouldn't be wanting to show everything. I In can't the, believe that up, Mark is arguing for segregation. This is never, the, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> this arguing. Is I'm, not, never, I'm, not, I'm not arguing. Fine. I'm just saying, I mean, look at uh, Society of the Snow. You know, massive okay. critical smash ev- everywhere. You know, it's going to be in the Oscar conversation by all accounts, and yet not a sniff of a cinema release. But that's just Netflix. That's Netflix being Netflix. So, but 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 then this is what I mean, though. It is is we we've just talked about those massive budgets and the the de-risking the mega return. Yeah, it's a sure weird decision when you put it up against um, All Quiet on the Western Front, which mm. they really like hammered home and and you know to huge acclaim last year it's it is a bizarre choice that they've they've underplayed society of the snow for sure Mm -hmm. so i mean i i I don't know if that's the case it's just that you know it's absolutely fascinating but i just hope that i I mean the one thing that they they shouldn't do is look at last year and explain all of those big blockbuster failures away as the legacy of covid i mean but they will i know they will (laughs) and and there, there is there is some degree of you know, those figures are inflated because there was a lot of COVID costs in there. But I think it needs to be that people just weren't interested in those staid IPs returning to cinemas. And I mean, I, I, you know, I love indie. I love Mission. I love all of them. I mean, I want to see something different. But I just like see look, look overseas for a, um, like some inspiration and you look at the boy and the heron which is studio ghibli and miyazaki's most lucrative film i think like beating out spirited away certainly internationally and uh godzilla minus one which was filmed for like 10 million or something (laughs) and like oh you can you can still make a film that everybody wants to go and see for very little comparatively very little yeah. money so just like go but do there, that but there is also a sweet spot because i i'm just playing devil's ad- advocate here i agree that half of the films that came out last year we didn't even need i'm sure a lot of people would say we didn't need another indie film we didn't need another 
Fast and Furious film. We didn't, but if they're going to make them, possibly the sweet spot is just not not spending that much on them. You know, like indie was only a flop for its budgets. It's yeah, like four hundred yeah. million it made. Four hundred million. Exactly. You shouldn't need a, to make a billion to call a movie yes, a success. Yes, exactly. That's an insane yeah. metric. And that's and I think uh, Fast X they spent three hundred and eighty million or something on it. That you know the if you and again COVID caused some of these problems, but really you need to be benchmarking like half that. Uh, maximum is what you want to be spending on on even blockbusters these days true because true. But, but, uh, that's that that's just it would be sensible let's say for hollywood to take that approach for a while completely but being the accountant in the room let's not forget that dark magic that is hollywood accounting i'm pretty sure every studio would like its books to say every film lost us money because then they don't have to pay back-end deals to anyone. <laughs> all those notions of, uh, you know, ongoing payments, that they all stop. So we we do, you know, the, there's always that that very sort of cynical streak of it that goes, yeah, did it really, because we all go, oh, it, you know, you have to double the amount of a budget for marketing. Well, says who? Do they, now that you've got TikTok yes, and viral and crap like that, do you really need to spend on a 400 million pound you know budget do you need to spend another 400 million marketing it do you these days so you know I, I am i agree that last year i think should be the wake up call for blockbuster cinema that that it was uh, was it was it just failure after failure after failure after failure well, i think we have to define failure let's be honest yeah fair enough uh, i mean i don't i don't think it was and i i do take your point on creative accounting I can see a lot of people smiling <laughs> at the uh, yeah. at the borderline. Was it really a failure? Or do we not have I, to pay any tax on this kind of situation here? Yeah, I, okay. exactly. But yeah. Well, so, you, know, you know, it's I think, I think everyone will look at last year and go, "I just hope we get something different." Hmm. Let's hope yeah. we do. We, we're not. We're going to get. <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna get Deadpool part three. Ten, part two. We are gonna get Deadpool three. People are suddenly gonna love it. It's gonna make a billion, and Marvel is gonna go right. Let's give them ten sequels next year. But we also have two of Spidey's Rogue Gallery with their nope. own movies this year nope. that they are going exist. to flop. Oh, you say boy. that. I I have a sideways suspicion that Madam Web will 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 somehow get a, a wider audience than we expect i'm i'm now going to furiously google what its uh budget was because <laughs> oh yeah I'm, that's a I, good idea i will place a wager now that it will not make its budget back so hold <laughs> please Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. and that's all we have time for. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ironically, I wrote in the coming soon section. Uh, Mark's going to be looking at uh, Matthew Vaughan's Argyle at the mm. cinema. Tom's going to be looking at Sony's latest Spider-Man universe. They've actually called it like the Spider-Man universe or something, and it's it's got it's basically just got Venom sequels in it. Oh plus, yeah, I forgot. I actually have to plot. go and watch Madame Web. Don't yeah, I? <laughs> you, you actually signed up for Madame Web. I, I, so. I volunteered for it. Yeah, he, it's he got did. a Spider-Man character in it. This is yeah. side tracking, but it's got a Spider-Man character in it that um, I have been like really pumped to see put in a movie. Like, oh my god, that's a deep cut. Like, good on you. But it, they're gonna trash it. It's gonna be god awful. It's gonna be pretty, pretty bad. It's gonna be pretty bad. Um, we're also going to be uh, going to streaming, looking at Spielberg's Apple TV follow-up to Band of Brothers in the Pacific, Masters of Air, uh, Paramount's Sexy Beast prequel TV series, mm. uh, Amazon's Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV reboot. I, I mean, oh, just no. I'm, I'm just I'm just saying this, you know, as no. I'm reading these out, oh. the idea that Mark is suggesting that we could have something new. <laughs> it seems seems mm. yeah not hey, not this year at, yeah, at this least year. they haven't put it out in cinemas that's all i can say oh, yeah, don't i'll release the first two episodes <laughs> in imax just because they got a spot but uh... Uh, yeah that's what we got coming soon so let's let's see how that pans out um but thank you thank you all that is it 
No bets today. 80 million was the budget for Madame Web. So yeah, I may, it'll, make, it'll make that back. Make, I may, make, I may eat my words on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, your punishment is you have to go and see it. So. Twice. <laughs> Uh, make, he has, he has the to review, back yourself. Yeah, he has to review the 4K as well when it comes out. I'll, sure I'll review the film and then I'll review my review of the film. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking when I... <laughs> Four out of ten. <laughs> I guess it's pretty good if you like chin-stroking movies like Tom Davis. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, That is it for the AV Forums movies and TV shows. January 2024, whatever, podcast. Thank you to the movie team, Simon. No, no, thank you. <laughs> and Tom. No, thank you. And Mark. Let me guess. Bye. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. No, leave me just, hanging. Yes, I will. I'll teach okay. you. <laughs> if, if you enjoyed the podcast, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Plus hit the notification. Is there even a notification bell? Plus hit that bell so you don't miss out when we publish our live streams, product reviews, and more. If you really like this podcast, buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash avforums, but leave your name as anonymous. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and bookmark avforums.com for the latest reviews, news, and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating on whichever service you use, if they allow it, but only if you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching and listening, and join us for another podcast soon.